cockpit, crew quarters, command center. When America's three astronauts travel to the moon, they'll use the Apollo command module for all these things. And of the three modules that make up the spacecraft, this is the only one that will come back. Complicated, complex. The command module is the flying nerve center for man's reach to the moon. It is 12 feet high and slightly less than 13 feet across the base. At launch, the command module weighs over 12,000 pounds. Weight and size are limited, so every feature, every part of the module has a precise role to play. The command module is equipped with 12 thrusters, small rocket motors with a thrust of almost 100 pounds each. Four of these are used to control the roll, four the pitch, and four others to control the yaw. Two side windows are provided for observation and photographic experiments. Between the windows, the access hatch, through which the astronauts will enter the spacecraft for the beginning of the trip and from which they'll leave at the end. At first glance, the cabin itself seems dominated by three crew couches, but there is much more. Each seat is designed to be as comfortable as possible. More important, though, they provide cushioning for the stresses and forces of acceleration and gravity. The commander's seat is different. It has controls on each armrest. On the left armrest, controls for forward and reverse thrust. And on the right, rotation control for roll, pitch, and yaw maneuvers. In actual flight, much of the thruster action will be automatic, guided by computer. But the commander does have the option of manual control. The middle seat used by the pilot of the command module can be folded back to provide working space and give the crew a chance to stretch. And beneath the right and left seats are beds. After all, it's a long trip. Almost every inch of the interior wall space is filled with switches, dials, and gauges. Some are similar to those found in modern jet planes, but others are new, designed for the requirements of space flight. Above the commander's couch, the major flight controls. An altimeter, which registers only 60,000 feet, the last 60,000 feet of the trip. Just below is the re-entry monitor to guide the commander during those last critical steps. Next to it, a master alarm light and signal. From the command module, the astronauts may also keep track of the direction of flight through space on this instrument. And fuel pressure in the launch vehicle. Still more controls. These serve to aim the third stage propulsion engine and lights to show ignition and burn of the main liftoff engines and the signal no astronaut wants to see. The panel directly to the right is the display and keyboard of the onboard computer. The commander or the command module pilot can ask questions of the computer by punching a code on the keyboard. Instantly, the computer returns the answer. After the spacecraft is on its way to the moon, the middle couch is folded back and much of the command module pilot's attention is directed toward guidance and navigation. The eyepiece on the left, a space sextant. On the right, a scanning telescope. Just below is another rotation control, identical to the one on the commander's armrest. This one is used for steering the spacecraft into position for celestial fixes. And these levers give precision control to the thrusters for final and accurate alignment of the navigation system. The third position in the command module is occupied by the man who will command the lunar module. But even during launch and the lunar trajectory phase of the trip, he's busy and responsible for the spacecraft electrical system, the life support systems, and the performance of the main engines. 
When the time comes, he and the commander remove the hatch and crawl through into the lunar module. Later, they return and settle down for the long trip home. Cockpit, crew quarters, command center. The Apollo command module serves all these functions and more in the complex job of getting man to the moon.